Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. I have something to show you today, you probably already know this, but it's something I rediscovered when I was playing around with napkins. I'm doing another little skinny journal and I thought I would do some napkin pages and I'll just show you what I've done so that you can see before I get on with the other stuff. This is a napkin and it's you can see the lace pattern of the paper behind it, which is really pretty. Then there's this one, and there's also the layers pattern behind there. And this one, I can't remember what the page of paper was. Oh, of course, that's why. It's double-sided tape. <laughs> double-sided paper. Silly goose. Not thinking right, but I had a little bit of left over here after putting it onto this pretty paper with the, the scrolls and the swirls in it. And I thought I can use that elsewhere in the journal as well. So I put that onto double-sided tape paper. But when I was messing around with this one, I had the tissue and I'd cut it to, or the napkin, and I'd cut it to this size. So as you can see, I had a fair bit left over. This was the backing paper. So I'd put that onto the paper with the flourishes on it also. And then I thought, okay, what can I do? So I grabbed the backing sheet and it was so pretty. It had just the most subtle pattern of the daisies through it and the leaves, and I thought I can use that. So I grabbed the backing sheet and put some double-sided tape on one piece close to the border of the napkin, so it's got that pretty thing on it. And then I realized that I'd use the third sheet, not the second. So it has no imprint of the pattern on it, but just the, the pattern of the doily. If you don't press it down too hard, if you just gently tap your fingers along the, the tape, the little embossed part of the napkin stays there. If you push it down, it gets very smooth. Now these are little pieces of the napkin I had left over after I trimmed the, the journal page and they make wonderful washi tape. And it also coordinates with the journal that I'm doing. So I can use these three pieces anywhere I like. Now the little trick I wanted to show you was with the, the second one the sort of the one that was close to the pattern in between the the first and the third layers. Do you get what I'm talking about? I hope so. I put a little piece of double-sided tape along there and then I thought I can make different widths by using a scrap of my jack paper. So I layered that down. I've got it a half inch wide there, a one inch and a 516 because that's all that was left over. It's just slightly bigger than that. But I thought I would show you what I mean about gently putting the paper onto the tissue paper as opposed to really putting it down and um, burnishing it heavily. So get the tape and just lay it very carefully. Now I didn't press that down, I just made sure it was adhered. Now turning it over just very carefully, run your finger down it so that you're making sure it's adhered. Now you can see I got a little heavy there because that little piece was, it's smoothed out. Let me show you what happens when you burnish it with a bone folder. Now I'm going to be careful to try and leave this one alone so you can see the difference. You can see how it's starting to smooth out, it's losing all that little beautiful pattern but it's giving you something different to play with so I don't know how well you can see that so let me hold it up closer to the camera I know I can zoom in while I'm editing but I haven't worked that bit out yet so there is the non-burnished piece and there is the burnished piece with the bone folder it makes a world of difference, doesn't it? And here I've just run my fingers along, but if I go like this, it takes out all of the, the little rough bits, but I'm not going to go down and do it because I want that pretty edge left on there. So I've got a smooth piece up here and then the textured section down the bottom there. So I just thought I would show you that. And while I'm here with you, I might as well cut it out so that I've got the little pieces I can play with. You can, of course, 
cut it narrower if you want to. I like my washi about the half inch, but there are occasions when I like it wider. Perhaps if I'm doing the edge of a page and I want to curl it under, then the one inch is going to come in very, very handy. And because the pattern is so subtle, it's going to look very elegant. See what I mean? Isn't that so pretty? It is just lovely. And yes, I will trim that little bit off in a minute. So whatever you do, when you're doing your napkins, if you're doing what I've done and adhered them to other papers, check your layers to see what little patterns are left so that you can make something just as pretty as this, as well as having this. That's the front of the napkin, and that's the next layer under, and the last layer is more than just plain white. So you've got three different things you can do, or three different looks that you can get using the layers of napkin. If you take the time to do it, you know, while in, your, in the planning stages, if you're just putting all your pages together and you've done some of your napkins, have a look at your backings and see what you can come up with. I'm going to see if I've got another piece of slender jack paper that I can put that onto. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, 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 how nice. Not quite as long, but I can still use it. Oh, be careful not to press that down, Ruth. I'll just cut this out quickly so that that little section is done. This is just a, a quick little video to show you what you can do if you stop and think a little bit with all of your resources. You know, I've just saved a few dollars on washi tape because I've made it myself. You know, so always think of your trimmings when you're taking things apart, when you're when you're playing, just play a little more and put your thinking cap on and you can come up with all this wonderful, wonderful stuff. It's just awesome to play. Um, quick stick. Oh, we're having fun with this today, okay. Of course, the bottom layer wants to come off, not the top. Now, making sure I've got my little pattern up the right way. Oh, I was lucky it hadn't, didn't it here then? I was very lucky. Oh, that actually looks quite bright. No, I want the set the little pieces uprisen. Uprisen? On top. Yeah, one of those. Okay, now just very carefully. Don't push it down heavily. Just make sure that it's stuck. So pretty. And this is another piece I can use to put around the edge of a page or I can use it to help a spine page if I've got some older paper that needs the the spine strengthened I've got that I've got this that I can put onto it there's nothing like a little bit of prettiness to to add something and this is just so subtle So thank you very, very much for watching. I will catch up with you on the next video. If you've liked this little video, could you leave me a comment if you haven't seen this done before? I'd love to know. And you know, if you have seen it before, let me know how I've done, if I've done it well, or if I've done it um, a different way to what you do. I'd love to have your opinions.
Thank you very, very much. And I will catch up with you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.